Good morning. Welcome everyone to our webinar this morning. And uh, we just wanna welcome all of you to today's webinar on trends in HR technology. You know, HR technology has been a very hot topic for HR professionals right now. Many of our employee benefit consultants, our 401k consultant team, and our total absence management team, as they work with HR professionals, we hear about this um, on a routine basis. And so I'm confident that you will find this information very interesting and a really valuable investment in your time this morning. I am really excited to be introducing you to Kelly Lemieux today from Benefit Technology Resources. BTR is one of TPG's partners uh, that we work with on a national basis, and Kelly is an expert in HR technology. So she's gonna be the one leading us through this information, and I'm simply acting as today's host. Um, but it is gonna, Kelly's gonna cover a lot of great information about how the evolving technology is changing employee experiences, the perspectives of HR teams, and the challenges many of you face, how technology is addressing those challenges, benefits administration, and then helpful information about this new topic of human capital management. Our introductions for today, of course, my name is Sarah Friend, and I host many of our webinars here at the Partners Group. Um, but Kelly, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, today's presenter, and Kelly is the Consulting Division Manager for Benefit Technology Resources. She has nearly 20 years of experience in payroll and HR outsourcing, and Kelly has implemented several of the major technology platforms, including PeopleSoft, UltiPro, and Workforce Now for the mid-market space. We are so fortunate to work with Kelly on many of our joint clients. And um, she also, I know many of our clients also work with ADP. And so she, uh, before she joined uh, BTR, Kelly was an implementation project manager for ADP. So she has a lot of experiences with uh, many of the uh, platforms that many of our clients use. So we're so grateful for Kelly to be with us today. So before we get started and before I hand it over to Kelly, I know we've got uh, many clients on the phone who know all about the partners group, but I did see on the registration list that we've got some attendees who are um, new to uh, TPG. So I wanted to just give a few, um, a very brief introduction about who we are here at the partners group. Uh, we are the leading independent benefits broker here in the Northwest. We have grown to more than 145 employees serving clients in Portland, like Oswego, Bellevue, Bend, and Bozeman. So we uh, really pride ourselves in our dedicated local service model um, in serving uh, businesses primarily headquartered and making their benefits decision right here in the Northwest. In terms of um, our large division as a firm, our largest division is our employer services division, which um, offers four distinct uh, divisions within that model, including employee benefits, which is our largest division, retirement planning, health and productivity, and healthcare intelligence. So with that, um, I want to reserve uh, most of this hour to and hand it over to Kelly Lemieux from Benefit Technology Resources. So Kelly, I think I'm going to, at this point, hand over the uh, clicker to you. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for including me today in this webinar. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, good morning to all of the attendees. I'm happy to um, spend some time with you all today and just talk through some of the trends that we're seeing as the technology landscape evolves. Just one measure of housekeeping from my perspective, I would ask that you all keep any of the vendor um, or technology community intel that we share today confidential. Um, if we were to ever have an opportunity where we would engage on a technology evaluation project together, 
Um, we would look for a mutual non-disclosure agreement between our two firms so we can share freely um, the details of how we have witnessed these um, technology vendors to perform in our 10 years of experience in working with them. So today, as Sarah mentioned, we're going to talk of, about um, BTR and who we are and what we do. Um, also, much of what we're going to cover today is what we're seeing, how the technology um, landscape has changed and where we think it will continue to evolve. Um, there has been a shift um, in consumer drive. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll also discuss some of the differentiators between the human capital management vendors um, and what they offer versus an all-inclusive solution or maybe, um, maybe it's a point solution such as benefits administration exclusively or maybe even an enrollment platform. So we'll talk about those differences today as well. Just to give you some, some faces that go along with the team here at BTR, um, here's our executive and leadership team. Um, our firm was started 10 years ago by Jamie Hawkins. Um, she came from the insurance world and saw a need for this consultative value add um, and started BTR. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary in February um, and we're excited about the next 10 years. Um, Kate Taylor has been here for nine of those 10 years. She is our acting vice president, um, but some of you may know her as the primary leader of our benefits administration division. We also have a director of strategic initiatives. Um, this, Josh serves a role in really helping broker partners and clients alike think about the creative solutions ahead of them um, outside of what you may think is the common, uh, the common platform. We're here to help you think creatively and kind of broaden your horizons about the technology landscape. And then Sarah introduced me earlier. My name Kelly is Kelly Lemieux. I am the consulting division manager. So a little bit of background about who we are, um, BTR or Benefit Technology Resources. We are an independent HR technology consulting firm. And that's quite a mouthful. <laughs> and we're the largest of our kind that services the mid-market. So we define the mid-market for employers with employees ranging anywhere from 100 employees on up to around three to 5,000. Anything beyond that mark we consider enterprise. Um, we do have some exposure in that enterprise space, but the majority of our technology engagements is in this mid-market space. And the areas in which we specialize are listed here on your screen, primarily around the HR and benefits uh, and, and payroll suite of services. Um, this list of modules, if you will, continues to grow. Things, uh, features here that used to be um, optional or maybe uh, on the wish list are now considered part of the core platform. Things like recruitment, performance management, and onboarding capabilities. Now we see those as more of the core solution and the newer features that are hitting the market are things like compensation management and succession planning, um, even learning management tools that were once reserved for um, the deep pocket buyer are now coming down market and are a bit more attainable and affordable. But what I would like you all to remember from this um, conversation today is that our stance in the marketplace is to be unbiased and independent. So what that literally means is we are not taking any kind of kickbacks or commissions from any member of the provider community. Um, and we feel that that is the best approach um, to solely focus on the needs of a consumer organization when evaluating what the options are in the market. So we want to talk a little bit, the next couple of slides are devoted to the evolution of what has changed the technology purchase um, in the recent decade. Consumers are becoming more and more educated about their technology options. 
Um, there used to be an avoidance of technology, I'd say even as recently as three years ago, because it was just such a complex option and not a lot of buyers were comfortable with what they were investing in. Now, the technology capabilities are becoming more and more prevalent, so therefore consumers are more educated than they ever were about what they're potentially um, investing in when it comes to a technology partner that will help them evolve um, and free up soft dollars to become more strategic organizations um, to make the experience better for the end user um, or the employees, in many cases, strengthening the engagement um, from their perspective. Um, so what you'll see here on the next few slides just illustrates that um, in, in other ways. Um, when adopting technology, much of um, the types of folks that we're working with are very lean, payroll and HR teams that so probably resonates with many of you because that's what we've learned over the years is that um, internal administration teams are becoming leaner, um, relying on technology to do so much more of the tactical work so the individuals can focus on the strategic initiatives of the organization. And really the, the regulations around the Affordable Care Act launched everyone into this, this space where that the compliance around ACA was so complex, is so complex, that everyone was clamoring for a technology platform to relieve any kind of manual effort for filing or tracking eligibility. So we really saw an influx of uh, buyers to the technology space with the onset of ACA regulation, quite frankly, because no one wanted to take it on themselves as a manual task. Much of the administration work that is done um, through a paper pushing type process is very burdensome to the HR and payroll teams and benefit teams. So the more technology can step in and relieve that manual burden and those administrative pain points, um, the, again, the more available the individual is to, to focus on um, more creative uh, forward momentum type goals. And as newer generations join the labor force, we see that the employee expectations um, are much higher than they ever have been in the past. So with the need for the technology for the employee to be as easily accessible as possible, that is driving much of the development that you see changing in the technology industry in, in so many ways, not just HR um, technology. And again, administration um, for things like um, time tracking, um, FMLA tracking, um, onboarding efforts, even benefits of benefit enrollment probably being the biggest impact. Um, the more these kind of transactional items can be accomplished by way of technology, even with the end user, the employee pushing those transactions, um, again, the better the, uh, the operation will work and also the more reliable the data will be housed within the technology platform. Technology is also a very reliable um, relief, if you will, to the compliance component. Again, ACA launched this, I'd say, five years ago, um, three years ago, it was very, very prevalent. Um, the idea started around five years ago where um, just the idea of manually tracking compliance was becoming so burdensome that the consumer community, again, was demanding that technology step up and relieve this. And they still continue to do so um, with industry-specific reporting that is mandated, either, either at a federal or state level, um, leave tracking, um, all, all kinds of compliance components can can, you can look to your technology provider to relieve those burdens. And then the more, again, the more technology that's in place, the more you can focus on your strategy, your strategic intent as an organization to build your organization, or at least get everyone as engaged as you possibly can by way of deploying engagement tools, 
many of the technology platforms out there you see today, especially the newer members to hit the market, have a very um, a new and useful feel. It looks a lot like social media rather than an, an administrative tool. So the more engaging or attractive the platform is um, to your employees, the more ownership they will take of their own data, thus relieving the administrative team. And here you'll see um, what the progression has looked like over the last 15 years or so um, and how the technology market has been more and more welcome um, to the consumer and how it's progressed over time. So in the early aughts, we saw a big need for the basics payroll and benefits administration. And once those features became more of the standard, right? Everyone was getting used to the status quo for payroll and benefits administration. The evolution then turned to um, the HR practice of hiring, recruiting, and then developing even further into features like learning management. And again, just like how the popularity increased, the accessibility has increased over the years. So much of what you're seeing here used to be reserved for, um, you know, the enterprise marketplace, uh, employer groups with thousands, tens of thousands of employees. But now these features are more and more attainable. Um, learning management used to be um, solely offered through a point solution, meaning a provider that solely exists to offer learning management. Well, now that that is increasing in popularity, um, the holistic providers are even starting to and getting better at offering um, their own learning management components. So again, as they become more popular, they're going to become more attainable through your technology um, options. And then, of course, we're moving away from on-premise solutions um, and relying more and more on cloud-based solutions. Um, this uh, works to um, supplement the security concerns um, or, or relieve some of the security concerns that were previously um, uh, of to uh, at top of mind for many consumers. Um, the cloud um, concept adds um, layers of security, um, for instance, multiple authentication factors um, for an end user before they're able to log into the system. That can be perceived as burdensome for certain groups, but it is done with the employee's security at, at front of mind. So again, more and more um, consumers are relying on these cloud-based systems or um, or, or SaaS systems. And then we'll continue to keep our finger on the pulse of the next generation. So more and more app features, mobile app features um, that are being rolled out um, with a broader offering of, uh, of wellness uh, offerings to the employee. Again, all of these features that are commonly part of the human capital management platform are being pushed to the mobile app level. So to, to again, drive further engagement from the, from the employees. And here's just another perspective of that automation and how it has evolved. Um, over the years. Again, talent management growing in popularity. Talent management is more of a core offering now than it ever was before. So when we talk about core um, features, we'll see that in a couple of other slides here, but the core features really started out um, as, you know, payroll, HR, benefits administration, but now more and more technology providers are considering a talent management suite part of their core offering. So as you start to see proposals, if you're entertaining new technology partnerships, if you start to see proposals, their core offering is more robust today than it ever was. And it may be driving them to hand down a more bundled pricing approach. So if you ever need help navigating any of those proposals, please get in touch with our friends at the partners group. Um, and they'll make an, an introduction 
so we can um, help with that pricing evaluation. And in addition to the tactical components of a technology partnership evaluation, so much of it really depends on a cultural alignment. So the nature of your organization, the demographic of your users, um, the way in which you consider employee engagement, some of these intangibles are really growing to be more and more part of the discovery conversation with the human capital technology vendor. Because, and, and, and let me back up, you as a consumer will want to push those intangibles to make sure that you are partnering with a like-minded technology vendor. So if, if your intention is very employee focused to make sure the tools are engaging as possible, as engaging as possible, then you'll wanna make sure that you're evaluating a like-minded technology vendor that has a very employee friendly and user friendly interface um, versus an organization who is very administration centric um, maybe the demographics of the organization, um, you know, are, are made up of um, employees who are not um, heavy technology users. So in that case, it becomes less about accessibility for the employee because, quite frankly, they've proven they're not going to use it. And it becomes more of an evaluation of what is the best fit for the HR team since they're going to be the one doing the heavy lifting um, and, and using the majority of the system. So, so I would encourage you all to think about those intangibles to make sure that not only your um, a technology partner that you could potentially be evaluating checks all of your tactical boxes, but you'll want to make sure that they're also a cultural alignment and cultural fit as well. And this just represents um, a, a, a major increase that is projected in the investments in HR technology. This is a a very fast paced, very fast growing industry. And you'll see here from the numbers, um, in 2016, there was over $2 billion invested in the HR technology space. And that growth is forecasted to exceed 20 billion um, in the next few years. So as those dollars <laughs> um, grow in this market, um, we can certainly expect the capabilities to continue to grow as well. And again, on the uh, evolution concept here, um, you know, the, the history and, and the development of the buyer. When technology first became hot, um, you know, we were working with groups that were rather new to technology. Um, maybe considered a, a low sophistication of users. But again, as the technology industry grows in more than one way, um, as a concept, as technology grows and we as a society become more tech friendly, the, the persona has evolved, right? So now we are dealing with a very high, highly sophisticated user, someone who is very much aware of what they need from a human capital management technology vendor. Um, so the scrutiny has become more intense than it ever was. So what we're seeing is that the technology market is responding. Um, I would say that they're responding a little bit later than we wanted them to. There are still some platforms out there where we are encouraging them to update the look and feel of their user experience. Um, but large and in part, the technology community is responding to the demand of the consumer. Again, where sophistication used to be pretty low, now we are dealing with a very educated buyer, someone who knows exactly what they need. So what we can do to help even a highly sophisticated user is not only identify what the tactical needs are from a new technology partnership, but we also evaluate the business need behind the te technology interaction because that business need is what's going to drive us to the appropriate corner of the market while keeping in mind that cultural alignment that we just spoke of.
So for anyone who hasn't necessarily formed a partnership with a technology vendor and still on a paper or manual basis, you may wonder why technology is so important. And again, much of it is stems from the compliance regulation. Um, again, the Affordable Care Act kind of launched us into this need, um, but also the byproducts are that we're seeing that there's just so much opportunity to reduce the manual activity to free up time to focus on more strategic initiatives. Um, again, we've talked about the mobile capabilities, um, and also what we're seeing now is the further development, development of analytics and, and, and business intelligence tools, where um, you know, rather than just a standard deck of payroll reports, what you have access to is um, analytics and benchmarking that's attractive to your leadership team or your C-suite so they can see in a snapshot format the health of the organization, the health of the financials, um, you know, the state of payroll, um, you know, where things stand from an onboarding perspective or recruitment perspective um, in a very visually, um, a, a manner that visually summarizes um, rather than these really complex reports that you're used to either getting from your technology partner as a, as a standard report or maybe you're building the reports manually um, or coming through a very comprehensive uh, CSV or, or Excel output. So I'd like to talk a little bit about specifically benefits administration and what separates a basic enrollment tool versus a fully comprehensive benefits administration offering. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, again, enrollment tool you see on the left. This is simply something that takes the enrollment burden off of maybe an on-site enroller. This gives the employee an opportunity to enter their elections either during new, the new hire process or open enrollment um, online versus on paper. That data could be keyed by an enroller. If there's someone there um, assisting your employees with their selections, um, if the capability is not offered to the employee, um, maybe there's a centralized point of contact, an administrator or an enroller that's actually keying the data, thus leaving it exposed for, uh, you know, just manual entry error or data integrity issues. Um, usually an enrollment tool is going to offer a transmission of enrollment data only during open enrollment and only by way of a flat file, which means a, a collection of enrollment data that is pushed to the carrier. Very basic reporting. Um, sometimes these enrollment tools are offered through um, a voluntary carrier or maybe your enroller. And again, just a more basic platform. Whereas a true benefits administration platform is going to offer the, all of those things and more with more robust capability, including um, some decision support options. Um, thus potentially eliminating the need for an enroller or an enrollment meeting. Um, a, a decision support tool offered through a true benefits administration platform is an interactive tool that will guide the employee to the appropriate plan for them based on their needs. And there's interaction between the um, between the decision support tool. It's very commonly through an avatar, um, an interactive personality, if you will, that engages with the employee through the BinAdmin system. The data um, integration is much more sophisticated with a, a true BinAdmin platform. So the, the, the file feeds can be customized, they can be scheduled, um, there's even integration possibilities with the payroll platform if it's something separate than the benefits administration vendor. And all of this just allows for tighter data integrity and more reliable reporting. A robust benefits administration platform is likely going to come from a point solution or an offering outside of your inclusive human capital management provider. So for instance, if we wanted to consider 
um, what ADP offers. They're the biggest uh, vendor in the market, so it's easy to refer to them as the example. But they offer all of these features, including a true benefits administration platform within the Workforce Now offering uh, or the Vantage offering. However, it may not be as truly robust as a standalone platform or a point solution. Um, and then the common uh, differentiator between those is that decision support feature that we talked about. Also, dependent verifications, um, evidence of insurability processing, these are all enhanced capabilities that come commonly through a point solution. And through your benefits enrollment process, um, it's always beneficial if your broker or friends at TPG have access to your data because they can help when questions arise around the, the um, administrative data or the benefit administration process. Um, again, all of this that we've talked about today is intended to relieve the manual burden for the administrative team. And then we also expect to see a return on investment. So when investing in a benefits administration platform, the idea is to, again, relieve the manual burden, relieve the effort or the possibility, excuse me, of uh, any kind of um, manual entry errors that can um, cause, uh, you know, hours of correction. So um, the ROI here is intended to relieve soft costs. So let's have a similar conversation about human capital management. Um, human capital management is the inclusive concept of, of an all-inclusive provider who offers the modules and features that you see listed here. So again, core features and functionality, payroll, HR, newer core features are onboarding, benefits administration, applicant tracking, um, and et cetera. The reason why you might want to consider an inclusive human capital management is that there's no need for integration. So there's no need to build custom file feeds, although possible, but there isn't a need because all of the modules and offerings are under one vendor. And then it creates one system of record for your users, your administrative team, your employees. So that consistent user experience. Again, here we've talked about this already, but it just highlights, you know, the the core components of a human capital management versus some things that that you may consider outside of uh, the core platform. Um, again, maybe you'll introduce or you'll want to consider a point solution for benefits administration or these features that you see here. Um, and then there's the more strategic components, such as the business analytics, the employee engagement, um, and again, more of those interactive tools between administrator and employee, um, such as performance, um, learning management, and even those compensation tools. So naturally, the, the features that you see listed here on the left under the core tactical um, uh, features, these are going to be your, your your core features for base pricing. As you add these layers for some of these crossover modules or the more strategic, you can expect your investment to go up. And again, just be mindful of when considering your human capital management partnerships. Um, be mindful of a realistic and reasonable deployment and delivery. Um, your human capital management um, is likely going to be um, implemented by one specific team, maybe some subject matter experts um, on a module basis that will step in as implementation specialists um, and assist with the feature specific implementations. Um, and again, if you consider a point solution, just remember you'll be dealing with a separate team for the, to establish that solution. And once it's built and configured, then the conversation will graduate to the integration 
discussion and comments. So again, we've been talking about a point solution. Uh, when you hear that terminology, um, just, just remember that this is an individual database. It stands on its own. Um, and then there's an integration component to be considered to have that point solution talk to your core platform. So again, here are some examples of point solutions. And some considerations when you're evaluating whether or not you want to go with that holistic provider or a point solution. So again, the holistic HCM offers many modules, not too much integration needed. Um, it's a single database, a single point of use. Whereas a point solution might satisfy the need if your needs are complex. Um, and primarily point solutions are considered again for benefits administration or maybe the HR talent suite. Um, but this is when your needs are complex, they are outside the bounds of what the holistic provider may offer in that regard. So, hey Kelly. Yes. This is Sarah. Just can you give a couple of examples of um, some, you know, um, pretty popular holistic <laughs> solutions and some um, there you go. Look, I just led you straight into that slide. <laughs> there you go, Sarah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, and let me say this. Um, when we show you these popular logos, this is just intended to give you some market recognition. There's no um, subliminal messaging or endorsement here. Again, remember that we're uh, unbiased in this evaluation. But here are some examples, to Sarah's point, of who may be considered a holistic human capital management provider. So if you think about how ADP operates and Paycom, they have this nicely packaged um, inclusive offering, which means you can rely on them to build a, um, a, a platform that suits the baseline of all of those needs, all under one umbrella, if you will. Now, some members of the human capital management community have decided to partner with point solutions. So here in the middle, you'll see ProLiant and Paylocity referenced. What they have done is they have partnered with point solutions to offer within their solution. So for example, both ProLiant and Paylocity are resellers of B-Swift, which is considered a best in breed point solution for benefits administration. So what's nice about these types of partnerships is that they rely on the experts to build and develop that specific feature. Um, and this is really common with benefits administration because that functionality is so robust and complex that it is really taxing to build that from a homegrown basis or consider that or, or build that to be a proprietary portion of your database. So we all know ADP has been around for decades. They have their, the R&D dollars to build their own um, uh, benefits administration platform within their holistic solution. Whereas some other members of the community have decided to partner. So ProLiant and Paylocity are perfect examples. Um, Paycor is another one. I'm not sure if they're prevalent in your market, um, but Paycor is another human capital management who has decided to integrate with BSWIFT specifically. And then further to the right, you see some examples of point solutions. Um, these are very common point solutions for benefits administration, um, and they're not necessarily one size fits all. Employee Navigator is a nice base model, if you will, um, a, a good um, a tackling of benefits administration, maybe for a first time technology adopter, um, maybe for the lower end of the market or a budget conscious consumer. Plan source is more of your mid-market solution um, with a um, with a relative price point. It's kind of the the more uh, you know uh, economy standard, if you will. Um, a little bit more robust, newer features, yet still pretty affordable. And then in the up. In the upmarket, you have uh, providers like B-Swift and Business Solver. So we put this here only to draw attention to the fact that there is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to human capital management or point solutions. 
So um, if you are considering these types of partnerships, we can help you through a very customized um, evaluation based on your needs. And Kelly, can you also add a little bit of information about how BTR may be able to gain access for our clients who uh, may be in the middle market to solutions that if they were to go on their own may only be available to larger employers? That's right, good point, Sarah. Um, BTR, we have um, a benefits administration division where we happen to be resellers of some of these platforms as well. Um, so we specifically offer Employee Navigator, Plan Source, and BSwift. And the nice thing that Sarah was alluding to is if someone were to go to BSwift, for example, directly, um, BSwift has a minimums, meaning they don't partner with groups under 3,000 employees. It actually used to be 1,000. They just increased that minimum over the last couple of months. So 3,000 employees just to get in the door with BSwift. Through reseller arrangements like ours, we bring that threshold down to 300 employees. So we are able to introduce these more robust point solutions um, a bit further down market because we have a reseller agreement and we can make those rules on our own. Um, so I think that's what you're alluding to, Sarah. Anything else that you'd like for me to add, add commentary? No, oh, that was exactly it. Um, you know, we've got in Oregon, we have a lot of mid-sized employers who may be discouraged and see the benefits of these big, robust point solutions and feel discouraged that they may not have access to them. So I just wanted to make sure that they um, were made aware that we, through TPG and BTR, can get access down to a, a much smaller um, employer size. Absolutely. So another component that we've touched on a little bit um, when it comes to the considerations and evaluations of technology is the idea of a data exchange or integration. And this is where we have, <clears throat> excuse me, two different platforms, data platforms um, that are performing well, um, but we need to figure out how they perform together. So we bridge them with an integration. And there is a pretty, big spectrum on how the vendor community defines integration. Um, there are, um, you know, very uh, basic methods of integration where you extract data from one platform and import it into another. That's the, that's the very basic, the very manual and tedious um, method of integration. Um, you can take that concept and, and translate it into a bit more of a sophisticated version through a file transfer, which is automatically done between the two platforms, but it is pushed. So the data is pushed either on demand or on a schedule. And again, we're talking about data that is imperative to the performance of both platforms. So therefore, it must be shared and transmitted um, between the two. Um, and there's an integration concept that is a single direction push, 180 degree integration, or maybe there's data that needs to be exchanged in a full circle um, with a 360 degree um, transmission of data. Um, and then on the, on the further end of the spectrum, the most sophisticated concept or, or method of integration is through an API. This is the most sophisticated on-demand um, excuse me, not on demand, but real-time integration. And when I say real-time, I'm using air quotes over here because it's about a three to five second exchange. Um, but when updates are made in one platform through an API integration, you can count on it to show up real-time in the other platform as well. That way you have a hybrid system of record rather than forcing one or two, or one or the other to hold that title. And this, again, is most commonly discussed when we're talking about a core platform where payroll is performed and a benefits administration platform. That's the most common um, two locations in which we have to connect through an integration, um, but it is also available for recruiting platforms, um, for learning management systems, so on and so forth. One thing to keep in mind is that the technology for integration exists. We all know that the technology is there. It is possible. 
but it is very important to not make assumptions when you're considering integration. You'll want to get both platforms on the same page so they can agree. So there is a can we do it component and a are we willing to component. So especially when it comes to an API, the real-time integration, because it forces each vendor to kind of open up their gates and be willing and accepting of this real-time integration. So, um, and this can be really complex. So if this, um, if this concept gets muddy or you find yourself struggling to navigate this conversation, um, please pull us into the fold and we can help facilitate. So as we round out, um, there are some, you know, just some considerations for final thoughts. Um, whenever considering your evaluations, you'll want to gather internally as an organization and figure out what your goals are. We can guide you, but it certainly helps um, when all of you have gotten together to establish what your primary, um, what your priorities are. Um, because remember, not all provider, not all providers can do all things. There's, um, there's no purple unicorn out there. So we have to really rely on identifying what your priorities are, so we can guide you to make the best fit decision. Um, when having that in internal evaluation, it's really good to think about or have front of mind what your strategic objectives are. Most commonly. This is for growing organizations when they know that they're going to need to find a technology partnership that can scale with them. And then also it's, it, it's always a good exercise to kind of foreshadow what your definition of success is. And then that will help you build your strategic plan leading up to that success. So just as um, a measure of benchmarking, um, you know, think openly and candidly about what success looks like, um, and that will help. It will help you all. It will help um, your friends at the partners group. It will help BTR. It will also help the vendor know exactly what your goals are. So, Sarah, do you want to um, round out uh, with these last few slides? That sounds great. So, I'll just have you, Kelly, go ahead and mute your so we don't have an echo and um, I'll take over from here. Thanks so much, Kelly. Okay, again, thanks for having me. Um, I'll change presenter. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, so as we come to a close, I wanted to just spend a minute and come back to TPG. So I wanna shift gears and um, talk a little bit about TPG. We've got many of our TPG um, employee benefit clients on the call. So you've just heard from Kelly, this um, excellent resource that we have partnered with on a national basis. So how can you move forward and take advantage of this uh, BTR and our subject matter expertise? Well, BTR is, is not the only investment that TPG has made over the past year in this really um, evolving space. TPG also now has an in-house subject matter expert, Casey Ford. And we just have seen the need for our clients for some assistance around this area, whether it be benefits enrollment, benefits administration, or really looking for somebody to guide them all the way through that um, human capital management solution. And, um, you know, historically, our focus has been on um, employee benefits, 401k, leave management. And so we really wanted to build out our robust suite of uh, services and consulting practice around technology. So Casey, we are so thrilled to have her available to our clients um, because it gives somebody, our team access to an in-house subject matter expert who really is totally focused on this evolving technology. Um, here at TPG, we know that one size does not fit all, whether you're talking about benefits or technology. So what we suggest is if this is a hot topic for you as a TPG client, uh, the best place to start is to reach out to your benefit consultant. So whether that's 
John and Liz in our Bend office or uh, Mike and team in Montana or up in Washington or a team here in Oregon, start with your consultant and your account manager and, and just say, hey, you know, I, I heard some interesting things. Um, you know, I'd like to learn more. That team can then engage as appropriate Casey or even BTR and Kelly uh, Lemieux from and her team to help guide uh, you through a discovery process to really vet out, as Kelly was talking about, uh, what are your objectives? What are your primary pain points? What are we trying to solve for? And then bring the experts to the table who can then help pair you with the right solutions. So, um, you know, we can, we can, we have the, both the in-house and external national um, support through BTR to do everything from, you know, a full RFP evaluation and implementation to some simple fact gathering and, uh, and guidance uh, for our clients. We've built over the last year um, a pretty good ro uh, robust suite of solutions um, around uh, technology and those include carrier access uh, to premier technology solutions. I'm sure you know every time you get a quote from a large uh, medical carrier or voluntary carrier or even you know I've seen some benefit technology to paired with EAPs, it seems like everybody has a technology solution to offer as a value add with their, um, with their contract. So um, TPG has vetted uh, many of those solutions. Uh, we can help our clients kind of, you know, suss out the, the value of those solutions and really find the right solution to meet your needs. We also have um, uh, premier contracts with, uh, uh, platforms like PlanSource, B-Swift, Employee Navigator, Ax, uh, Ascensus, Maxwell, Flock, and ADP. Um, we can offer um, uh, access to subsidies to offset the cost for these technology solutions and really guide you through a decision-making process that makes sense for your group. So um, we are excited to launch our technology solutions and introduce formally now our in-house expert, Casey, and also we're, we're thrilled to have access to BTR for our clients. With that, we'll go ahead and end today's webinar just a few minutes in advance. We thank you all for attending and look forward to hosting you again in one of our upcoming webinar series. Thanks so much and have a great day.